Toilet Paper Orientation Toilet paper, when used with a toilet roll holder and a horizontal axle parallel to both the wall and the floor, has two possible orientations. The toilet paper may hang over, in front of, or under, behind the roll. Some people hold strong opinions on the matter. Advice columnist Ann Landers said that the subject was the most responded to, 15,000 letters in 1986, and controversial issue in her column's history. Defenders of either position cite advantages ranging from aesthetics, hospitality, and cleanliness to paper conservation, ease of detaching sheets, and compatibility with pets. Some raters have proposed connections to age, sex, or political philosophy, and survey evidence has shown a correlation with socioeconomic status. Solutions where the views of household members differ include using separate dispensers or separate bathrooms and ignoring the issue. One man advocates a plan under which his country will standardize on a single forced orientation, and at least one inventor hopes to popularize a new kind of toilet roll holder which swivels from one orientation to the other. Context and Relevance In the article Bathroom Politics, Introducing Students to Sociological Thinking from the Bottom Up. Eastern Institute of Technology Sociology Professor Edgar Allan Burns describes some reasons toilet paper politics is worthy of examination. On the first day of Burns' introductory course in sociology, he asks students, which way do you think a roll of toilet paper should hang? In the following 50 minutes, the students examine why they picked their answers, exploring the social construction of rules and practices which they have never consciously thought about before. Burns' activity has been adopted by a social psychology course at the University of Notre Dame, where it is used to illustrate the principles of Berger and Luckman's 1966 classic, The Social Construction of Reality. Christopher Peterson, a professor of psychology at the University of Michigan, classifies the choice of toilet paper orientation under tastes, preferences, and interests, as opposed to either values or attitudes, traits, norms, and needs. Interests include one's favorite cola or baseball team. Interests are an important part of identity. One expects and prefers that different people have different interests, which serves one's sense of uniqueness. Differences in interests usually lead, at most, to teasing and gentle chiding. For most people, interests don't cause the serious divisions caused by conflicts of values. A possible exception is what Peterson calls the get a life folks among us who elevate interests into moral issues. Morton Ann Gernsbacher, a professor of psychology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, compares the orientation of toilet paper to the orientation of cutlery in a dishwasher, a choice of which drawer in a chest of drawers to place one's socks, and the order of shampooing one's hair and lathering one's body in the shower. In each choice, there is a prototypical solution chosen by the majority, and it is tempting to offer simplistic explanations of how the minority must be different. She warns that neuroimaging experiments, which as of 2007 were beginning to probe behaviors from mental rotation and facial expressions to grocery shopping and tickling, must strive to avoid such cultural bias and stereotypes. In his book, Conversational Capital, Bertrand Kazvet gives toilet paper placement as an example of ritualized behavior. One of the ways designers and marketers can create a memorable experience around a product that leads to word-of-mouth momentum. Kazvet's other example include shaking a box of Tic Tacs and dissecting Oreo cookies. Broadcaster Jim Bohannon has said that such issues are good for talk radio. It is an interactive medium, a certain kind of clash. It doesn't have to be a violent crash, but at least a disagreement would certainly be at the top of the list. It has to be something that's of general interest. Arguments the main reasons given by people to explain why they hang their toilet paper a given way are ease of grabbing and habit. Some particular advantages cited for each orientation include Over reduces the risk of accidentally brushing the wall or cabinet with one's knuckles, potentially transferring grime and germs. Over makes it easier to visually locate and to grasp the loose end. Over gives hotels, cruise ships, office buildings, public places, and homeowners with guest bathrooms the option to fold over the last sheet to show that the room has been cleaned. Over is generally the intended direction of viewing for the manufacturer's branding, so patterned toilet paper looks better this way. 
under provides a tidier appearance in that the loose end can be more hidden from view. Under reduces the risk that a toddler or a house pet, such as a cat, will unroll the toilet paper when batting at the roll. Under, in a recreational vehicle, may reduce unrolling during driving. Partisans have claimed that each method makes it easier to tear the toilet paper on a perforated sheet boundary. A traveler from the U.S. to China in 1991 noted a different setup, non-perforated paper with a metal cutter above the roll, which obliges the over direction. It is unclear if one orientation is more economical than the other. The Centralian advocate attributes a claim that over saves on paper usage to Planet Green. In the academic field of evaluation, Michael Scriven writes that the question of the correct way to insert toilet paper is a one-item aptitude test for measuring one's evaluation skills. These skills include the evaluative attitude, practical logical analysis, empathy, teaching, and being a quick study. To prove one's competence, one may either derive the one right answer or prove that the test is or is not culturally biased. Preferences. Survey results. The question, do you prefer that your toilet tissue unwinds over or under the spool, is featured on the cover of Barry Sinrod and Mel Portz's 1989 book, The First Really Important Survey of American Habits. The overall result, 68% chose over. In Bernice Kanner's 1995 book, Are You Normal?, 53% of survey respondents prefer over, while a fourth prefer under, and 8% do not know or care. Sitting Pretty, The History of the Toilet, a traveling exhibition that tours Canadian museums, asks visitors to register their preferred roll direction. When exhibition reached Huntsville, Ontario, in June 2001, 13,000 visitors had taken the survey with 67% preferring over. At the St. Boniface Museum in Winnipeg in February 2005, a voting machine registered 5,831 over versus 5,679 under, or 51% over. St. Boniface's director noted, I think there's been some cheating, though. Georgia Pacific commissioned a survey of Americans' bathroom habits in 1993 to launch its new Quilted Northern brand, and more surveys followed. 1993 Practices and Preferences of Toilet Paper Uses 73% over out of 1,200 correspondents. The press release claims, A first-of-its-kind survey has settled, once and for all, the great toilet paper debate. 1994 Toilet Paper Report 59% over out of 1,000 respondents Conducted by KRC Research and Consulting 1995 Bathroom Tissue Report 59% over versus 29% under out of 1,000 respondents, conducted by KRC Research and Consulting. 2001 Bathroom Confidential, 63% over out of 1,001 respondents, conducted by Impulse Research. 2004 Bathroom Confidential, 72% over. In 1993, American Standard Brands conducted a poll of designers, contractors, dealers, distributors, and other bath and kitchen reps at the kitchen-slash-bath industry show and conference in Atlanta. The question, what is the correct and only way to hang the toilet paper, over or under? Over won 59% of the vote, 1,826 to 1,256 respondents. American Standard spokeswoman Nora Monroe observed, the bathroom is a territorial place. You'd be surprised how many people have definitive opinions on this issue. In 2008, American Standard commissioned the 2008 Bathroom Habits Survey, a more traditional format conducted by Opinion Research Corporation with 1,001 respondents. This time, three quarters answered over. In 1995, a survey by Scott Paper Company's Cottonelle College of Freshness Knowledge had most Americans over 50 preferring over. In another Cottonelle survey in 1999, 68% of respondents preferred over to 25% under. In a survey of 1,000 Americans, Cottonell found that overs are more likely than unders to notice a roll's direction, 74%, to be annoyed when the direction is incorrect, 24%, and to have flipped the direction at a friend's home, 27%. According to W.C. Privy's original bathroom companion, number two, by more than four to one, older folks prefer having their toilet paper dispense over the front. 
The same claim is made by James Buckley's The Bathroom Companion for people older than 50. In one local election in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, new voting machines were given a trial run by asking the question, are you in favor of toilet paper in all public washrooms being installed with the loose end coming up and over the front of the roll? The answer was yes, 768 to 196, or 80% over. It was thought to be a question which carried no political association. Yet one teenager's science project at the Southern Appalachian Science and Engineering Fair, and a favorite of the fair's coordinator, was a survey concluding that liberals roll over while conservatives roll under. Noted preferences. Advice columnist Ann Landers, Epi Lederer, was once asked which way toilet paper should hang. She answered under, prompting thousands of letters in protest. Then she recommended over, prompting thousands more. She reflected that the 15,000 letters made toilet paper the most controversial issue in her column's 31-year history, wondering, with so many problems in the world, why were thousands of people making an issue of tissue? In November 1986, Landers told the Canadian Commercial Travelers Association that fine quality toilet paper has designs that are right side up in the over position. In 1996, she explained the issue on The Oprah Winfrey Show, where 68% of the studio audience favored over. Oprah suggested that under uses more paper. In 1998, she wrote that the issue seems destined to go on forever, insisting, in spite of the fact that an overwhelming number of people prefer the roll hung so that the paper comes over the top, I still prefer to have the paper hanging close to the wall. On the day of her last column in 2002, Landers wrote, P.S. The toilet paper hangs over the top. Her published commentary on the issue has even continued after her death. 2005 saw the premiere of a one-woman play written by David Rambo, a character study of Anne Landers titled The Lady with All the Answers. Toilet paper comes up once again, and the actress surveys the audience for their opinions. In his article, Teaching Sociology, Burns writes, that the toilet paper hanging exercise is valuable in part because the subject matter is familiar to everybody. Everyone is an expert, and everyone has an opinion. Many entertainers, celebrities, and business people have publicized their opinion on the topic. Social consequences. Toilet paper orientation is sometimes mentioned as a hurdle for married couples. The issue may also arise in businesses and public places. Even at the Amundsen-Scott Research Station at the South Pole, complaints have been raised over which way to install toilet paper. During the six-month-long polar night, a few dozen residents are stuck living together, and while many of the headaches of modern life are far away, food and hygiene are not. Despite the challenges posed by the hostile Antarctic climate, it is in the more mundane trials of everyday life that personality clashes are revealed. Solutions Some of the proposed solutions to this problem involve more or better technology, while others concentrate on human behavior. Mechanical. The tilt roll is a swiveling toilet paper dispenser invented by Curtis Batts in 1996, a Dallas native industrial engineer. His patents on the invention summarize its design as an adjustable angle coupling secures the yoke to the mounting assembly and permits rotation of the yoke about an axis directed orthogonally through the spindle such that the toilet paper roll can be oriented to unroll paper either from over or from under the roll, as desired. An inventor named Rocky Hudson demonstrated a similar device he called the TP Swivel to the producers of the television program Pitchmen in late 2009. Another solution is to install two toilet paper dispensers. A reader of the Annie's Mailbox column recommends using a holder large enough to fit two rolls, noting that the roll mounted over is more popular. Another reader sidesteps the issue by foregoing the holder, instead piling five or six rolls in a big wicker basket. Even using separate bathrooms can help. Other solutions include vertical holders. Behavioral. Toilet paper orientation has been used rhetorically as the ultimate issue that government has no business dictating. In letters to the editor protesting the regulation of noise pollution and stricter requirements to get a divorce. In 2006, Protesting New Hampshire's ban on smoking in restaurants and bars, Representative Ralph Bohm asked, Will we soon be told which direction the toilet paper must hang from the roll? David O'Connor's 2005 book, Henderson's House Rules, 
the official guide to replacing the toilet paper and other domestic topics of great dispute, aims to solve disagreements with a minimum of debate or compromise by offering authoritative, reasonable rules. The house rule for toilet paper is over and out, and a full page is dedicated to a diagram of this orientation. But O'Connor writes that, if a female household member has a strong preference for the toilet paper to hang over and in, against the wall, that preference prevails. It is admittedly an odd preference, but women use toilet paper far more often than men. Hence the rule.